Dr. Fairfax. You mind if I call you Kalia? Of course, I don't mind. You're my friend. Thank All you right. for the opportunity. Thank you. Of course, call me Kalia. So, 1619, I've heard a great deal, been so excited about the work um, around 1619, particularly as it's just posed against 1776. We were taught in school that 1776 is the birth of this nation. But there's a different kind of narrative that has led us to understanding that 1619 might actually make more sense to be identified as the birth of this nation. Can you talk a little bit about 1619 versus 1776? I live in Hampton, and Hampton is the place where in August of 1619, John Rolfe, Chronicle in his diary, he witnessed the uh, white lion, the ship white lion landing at Port Comfort, Port Comfort, present day Hampton, where the Port Moreau National Monument is, is located. And he witnessed uh, about 20 Africans disembarking that ship. In fact, I like to, for the sake of our discussion, quote his, a piece of uh, his letter. Uh, about the latter end of August, a Dutch man of war, the white lion, of the burden of the 160 tonnes arrived at Port Comfort. The commander's name, Captain Jope, his pilot for the West Indies, one Mr. Marmaduke, an Englishman. They met with the treasurer, that's another ship, in the West Indies, and determined to hold consort ship hitherward, but in their passage lost one the other. He brought not, uh, not anything but 20 and odd Negroes, which the governor and Cape Merchant bought for victuals, whereof he was in great need, as he pretended, at the best and easiest rates they could. So here these African people from Angola uh, was traded, were traded for, for, for food uh, that they needed. And hence we see the beginning uh, uh, with the treasurer, the ship treasurer landing some days afterwards. We see the beginning of African people entering into this, this forming of English North America, English Virginia, if you will, uh, given uh, the subjugation of, of native people. And we see this beginning really of, of enslavement. Uh, 1619 is the same year that the House of Burgess was was created. So we, we see the beginning, right, of, of this uh, sickening of human suffering and human trafficking of, of African people. And it would birth what would become Virginia as a leading colony. Uh, and we all know in years to come, so goes Virginia does the rest of, uh, of the country. 1619 is vitally important in that those early laws which racialized uh, human treatment, which uh, legalized enslavement, uh, began to be birthed in, in Virginia. Uh, and so when we understand African people, we should not only uh, use 1776, the birth of what would become America, but the fact that African people had been here even prior to 1619 because African people came from countries that were uh, seafaring countries surveil the, the, the world. And so we, we really should never start our history with it, with enslavement, but with the long history of African people. But with a particular consequence to 1619 is the fact that Virginia and or America would develop as a plantation capitalistic country, uh, a racial capitalistic system, a civilization that the world had really never known before until uh, that moment. And I think it's important and incredibly important for those of us who are in the social sciences to recognize in the lived experiences of people's ancestry and, and how it's very much connected to uh, patterns of behavior, institutional patterns of treatment. And then this whole notion of how then do we attend to, to people who come from, right? those uh, patterns where continuously we're having the same experiences because of who we are culturally, racially. And so I believe that's just a little bit of why 1619 is, is important with particular emphasis for social workers to really understand that you, you cannot talk about healing and helping 
uh, that's outside of history. Everything that we do with regards to transformative change, this thing called social justice, this thing called equity, uh, is about a reckoning with, with history. I absolutely, I absolutely love what you just said. And one of the points that, that sticks out to me is when you talked about, it's important that we not talk about the history of African folks and African-Americans starting even with 1619, starting with the beginning of enslavement in this country. Why is that important for social workers in its contemporary context? So social workers uh, must come to terms with our macro responsibility. And we all know that uh, within the last 35 to 40 years, there's been more emphasis placed on micro uh, interventions with people entering into licensure situations.